Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. On today's episode, we are going to examine and look at the very strange, unfortunate, and tragic death of the sister of tennis superstars, Venus and Serena Williams. Now, the young lady who I'm going to cover is Yatundi Price. And let me say this. Me and Yatundi did have a connection in that we were once co-workers. And I spoke with her many a times. She was supposed to have given me some tickets to um, some of their matches. But, you know, things happen. Eventually, what happened was that she got away from the hospital that she used to work at in Linwood, and she started to work part-time as their assistant. So she was traveling about. So it never came to fruition. But I knew Yutani to be a very nice lady, a very open-minded. Um, One of the things that struck me about her was the fact that I believe they were Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was reading a book at that particular time called A Divine Revelation of Hell. And she had told me that she had read that book. And I was very surprised. Then I spoke to her about many controversial things that were going on in the world. And I learned that she was very open-minded. She was not a pigeon, meaning that she would not just go along with what society or people are doing. She was her own person, her own woman. She thought for herself. And I want to say this. The person who she was with that particular night, is making noise. Now, we should be seeing Will Smith in a couple of days winning the Academy Award for playing Richard Williams. Will Smith did an outstanding job uh, in Venus and Serena. I love the movie. His performance was incredible. And what he conveyed was that when you do not look like someone, It is imperative that you speak like them or get their mannerisms down, get their gestures down, get the walk down. And he got that down very well. So we should definitely see um, Will Smith walking away with the Academy Award for a well, a well, it will be a well-deserved award. He deserves it. Now, this man right here is Roland Warmly. Mr. Warmly is the male who was with Gitandi the unfortunate night that she was gunned down in Compton, California. He's stating, above all things, that the family has pretty much shut him out. Of the Williams and Price family, shut him out because they believe he had something to do with Gitandi being murdered. Well, Roland, you did. Because by his own accounts, this is what went down. They were, well, let me backtrack just a tiny bit. They had met, they had mutual friends, and a mutual friend brought Yatundi to a birthday party for Roland. So Yatundi was sitting down, she wasn't dancing. Uh, He wanted to make sure that everyone there at the party enjoyed themselves. So he claims that he did not know who she was. <clears throat> and uh, he walked over there, asked her to dance, and they chatted the whole night. From then on, a relationship started. Now, a month before the unfortunate murder, he was at a, a Hawaiian-themed birthday party for Yatundi. And he was around. This just kind of blows my mind in, in a way. He claims he wasn't a gang member. I would beg to differ. Because he claims that when he met Yatundi, he gave up the life. Now, anyone who knows anything about gangs know that you cannot just get out. Particularly if you're still in the same area and location. And he was still known to frequent Compton, hang out in the area. So she brought him to her birthday party. This was... And who would have known 
no one could have seen this coming that five months later she would be dead by the very courts close by where they used to practice at. Now, what transpired was on the night of September the 14th, that day they had a date. Mr. Warmy chose to hang out at who knows his house, but he forgot about the date that he and Yatundi had planned. So she kept calling and calling and calling. And finally she got a hold of him. But from what I gather, it was he who needed a ride home because he had a suspended license. And it seems like she kept calling and calling and he was maybe doing drugs. She was very hysterical. She was crying. So basically, he called her from Corona to come pick him up. Now, Corona to Compton is like 41 miles. So at that time of night, it would have taken like 40 to 50 minutes to get there. He claims that she was drinking just a little bit. Not saying that she was above the, you know, limit of alcohol where you can be arrested. But nonetheless, he called her from Compton. She came out there in the wee hours of the morning to come pick him up. And basically, what transpired was that he claims that she told him that, that about her drinking a little bit. But he claims that he took over the driving, even though he had a suspended license. Something about that seems very fishy. And they drove down a side street so they can avoid being possibly stopped by law enforcement. So as they was driving down a side street, this man walks up to the vehicle. He was in a shadowy form. They couldn't make out the face of features. But he walks up to the vehicle and fired shots into the vehicle. Mr. Warmly says that he ducked or moved back and the bullets hit Yatundi. And apparently he says that had they would have worked on her at the scene, they could have saved her. But he's claiming that they took a while to get her to the hospital. How long? I'm not really sure. But as they were driving away, they knew that she had passed because they turned the lights out in the ambulance, according to him. And he says that they did not do anything to try to revive her, resuscitate her, work on her, until they found out that she was the um, sister of tennis stars Venus and Serena Williams. This is according to Mr. Warmly. So the nurses who worked with Yatundi, when they found out about the murders, they were devastated. They were stating that they couldn't work. Uh, they were just, um, you know, just out of it. They couldn't perform their duties at the hospital. Yatundi was eventually buried. Uh, a few doctors were invited, and just a couple of the staff there at the hospital, a couple of nurses were invited to uh, to attend her funeral in the Hollywood Hills at Forest Lawn Memorial Park. Now, let me um, add this in here. When Yatundi was dating this guy, friends and family warned her about him. I guess his presence gave off an eerie feeling. There are just some people that you can feel things about. And it just didn't sit right. But some women want to see the good in people. Or maybe they think they can change someone. Or that someone would change. But that particular life is very difficult to get someone from. Because when you got someone who does not really have the education. What they're going to turn to do is 
what they've been doing to get quick money, whether it be through selling drugs, whether it be through robbing people, a life of crime. And not long after Yatundi's murder, like a month after, he was arrested for burglary. And we come to find out that his account was not quite true with what was revealed. Because on the night of September the 14th, 2003, it says that Price was chatting with her boyfriend in her SUV parked outside what subsequently was uh, revealed to be a trap house in Compton, California. Now, according to the prosecution, uh, two members of the Southside Compton Crip Street Gang, who were guarding the house, opened fire on the SUV because they believed that they were defending the crack house from rival uh, gangs, presumably the Lima Hood Piru. So Price's boyfriend later claimed that he did not realize that she had been hit, uh, sped away in the car to a relative's home where he called emergency services. Then it, it says that here that Price was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at the hospital from, bullet, uh, from a bullet wound to the head. See, his account, he stated that she was already dead. Remember, he stated that had they would have worked on her and would have rendered aid, that she would still be alive. So I wanted to give his account and the prosecution's account just to show that someone's lying. And you know when you lie, you steal, when you steal, you're killed. And I believe that it's him who's lying. I believe that he was lying to Yatundi, telling her that he wasn't about that life, that he was out of there, that he turned over a new leaf. Because obviously that particular night that he was supposed to go on a date with her, he was at a crack house. He was probably doing drugs, selling drugs. He was pretty much still in the Crip gang. So I do not know if she knew or had any idea that she was involved with the Crip gang member. I believe that she probably did not know that. I believe that she thought he had quit. Sometimes this belief system of thinking and wanting someone to quit, it can become very strong that you force yourself to believe, you know, contrary to what's obviously going on. So it just goes to show one thing. I see these stories like this all the time. When I say stories like this, a female who has children, it's almost like perspective can be lost as to what's really important and what should be the top priority, which should be raising healthy minded children who have a very positive outlook on life, a very positive environment. Yes, children who can see their parents, their mother, full of joy and happiness, being a positive whole person. That's extremely important. But I think that by bringing these strangers into their lives, for the most part, and from that type of environment, it is just not going to happen. So I think that women, men, need to be extremely careful as to who they allow into their lives around their children. Because many times the outcome is not going to be good if it is the wrong person. And you leave a life, lives, many lives affected and devastated by this for years to come. So, from what I've heard, that her children are doing very well because Orsine took them in and they don't have to want for anything. The oldest child is grown now. And the other ones are approaching uh, adulthood. Very happy, well-balanced children. 
which I know that Yatundi would be very proud of. So, I just think that this Roland Wormley guy would do himself a lot of justice if he would just keep his mouth closed now. Contrary to what he wants to say or believe, he is somewhat responsible for what happened to Yutundi. And I will say too that she's a grown consenting adult. She chose to be with the man with the sketchy past. She was warned about him. So I can't allow that to escape neither. But with people with a sketchy past, our good deeds, our good thoughts, our seeing potential in them is not enough to change them. They're going to do what's in their nature. When I say what's in their nature, environment, what's in their upbringing, what they have been seen around them as a living, as life how they function. The best thing to do with that is just to stay away from it and not to get involved in the first place. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. And I will see you all beyond and through.